Hi, my name is Brian Rinaldi, and I'm a developer advocate at StackBit. Today, I want to talk to you about content modeling. It's an important topic, uh, even in a Jamstack context where you're connecting to a headless CMS, but it's not one we talk about very frequently. So what exactly is a content model? Well, a content model is a representation of all of the content objects in your content universe. I know that sounds vague, uh, so let me give you an example. So in this example, we have a content type of posts. And here it has a number of properties, the title, description, author, and body. So we also represent the relationship of that post to an author content type, which that author content type then has properties of its own. Now, this you may think of this in terms specifically of a website, but as we'll talk, this is more than just your website content. Okay, let's look at a slightly more realistic example that is a simplified version of something that I've built in the past. In this as an event site where we have events and those events have start dates, start times. They also have are made up of multiple sessions. So you have a sessions array that would contain um, references to a session object. And that session object actually has references to speakers because a session may have one or more speakers. But in this case, we've extracted that speaker to a person. And the reason we've done that be is because our site also has a post object that has an author. And that author could actually be the same person as is a speaker at a session. But this allows us to reuse it for both post and session without creating duplicate data. So how do you decide how to model your content? Well, that gets into on the concept of unstructured content versus structured content and why it's important to think beyond simply just your web page. So let's take a look at that. Okay, so let's take our events page example again. So this is an example of an event page that has, it has a title, has a start date and an end date, and then it just has this big body. Um, and this may be something you might do if you were using WordPress as an example, right? So what we have is a few properties, but then at the bottom we have this large unstructured body of content. Um, that's made up of sessions and everything. So this offers us a ton of flexibility in how we create the page, but it's gonna cause a number of problems if we need to update and or if we wanna maintain consistency across our site. So you might take that example and then say, structure it a little bit more, right? So now we have the title, start date, end date, and then instead of a large body, we have a description, which is gonna be just whatever we need to describe our event and then the session and speaker data that's all pulled from a session uh, content object and a speaker content object. So now our, our, we can reuse these pieces as well as we can ensure that the page as its output is gonna be consistent. So if you think about that example a little bit further, one offers a ton of flexibility to the person creating the content. They can pretty much do whatever they want with the body, while the other is much more structured and, and will be much more consistent. But from a user standpoint, they now have a lot more pieces they need to edit. So this is where you have to think about balancing the user's needs versus the needs of your content. So let's take another common example that, of this. In, in many cases I've seen, you'll see that instead of having an image property on a post, for instance, you might have a separate banner property that's a separate object, right? Um, and while this works and does allow for reusability of that banner, it may be, you may wanna consider the fact that now the user has to go and create a banner object every time they create a post, which is an, adds the complication of creating a post, whereas before they used to be able to just upload the image quickly and add it as a property to the post. And the whole thing to consider here is just, you can go overboard in abstracting out um, if you don't take into consideration the point of view of the user who's gonna actually be creating the content. Okay, so now that we've covered the, all the conceptual topics, let's talk about how you actually go about creating these things in a headless CMS. So in this case, I'm looking at an example uh, in Contentful. This is just our simple post author example. But as you can see, I have a type of post that I have different um, properties on that type and an author reference that references the other content object of author here. So um, that it's a very simple example, but essentially you go in here and you add a new content type and you start defining, defining the properties of that content type within Contentful. It's all visual, it's very simple to do. And let's take a look at Sandy because it's a completely different way of, of representing your content model. So Sandy does this in code. So in this case, I have a post that has a title property on, and then again, here's my reference to an author, which is a of type author. 
Um, and then you see the author type here, all represented in JSON. Uh, and you would actually have build out your entire model this way in code as opposed to via a visual interface. And so the key takeaways here are create your content model early. It's going to save you a ton of time. Trust me that going back and trying to correct the mistakes in your content model after you've already done a great deal of code is going to be painful. Secondly, a content model doesn't need to be complicated. You don't, it's not like a, if you've created those dick content, complex database schemas, those can be very, very tedious. This does not have to be that way. Just lay out the different, different types of content you're going to have and how they relate to each other and give some thought to what the different properties of those objects are and how that would relate to how a user uses them in the end in terms of editing them in your CMS. And finally, involve stakeholders. This is not a developer task. If you bring in the marketers and the or other teams who are actively going to be involved in working with content, you'll come up with a much more realistic content schema. Well, I hope this was helpful and I know it was very, very quick. So if you have some time, I have an article, Understanding Content Modeling in the Headless World that goes into a lot of the information that I covered here, but in a little bit more detail. You can find that at stackbit.com slash blog. You can also find me on Twitter at RemoteSynth or follow Stackbit at StackbitHQ. Thanks.